thing I want to point out is, if this is a standard model, and if this is the street model based on practice, then you can also work variations around these, moving them up and down to create a set of options. So these, they are sort of playing around with the sequence to change the cost, to make it more affordable, to provide more choices within, and again, there will always be that trade-off between affordability and access. And we, we hear all of the little signs of it, but we haven't put them all together. Everybody knows about edge cities, all right? That the fastest growing places are not the old city centers. The old city centers are decaying. If you've been reading the papers recently, the worst example of this inner city decay is Detroit. Lost, I don't know, 600,000 people. Uh, now the, the, the planners in Detroit, they have to sit down together and, and, and decide which neighborhoods to abandon. There's a shrinking cities group in Europe, and I remember going around Germany, former East Germany, with the planners, and they were saying, well, our big challenge is to decide which of these huge high-rise tenement buildings we want to destroy. Just, just destroy, raise them, knock them down. In other words, thousands of accommodations, flats, would disappear. Uh, and they have to decide which ones <coughs> strategically to, to, to make disappear uh, because of the uh, inner city uh, decay that has been happening in varying ways around the world. But almost every major city in the world has lost some of its inner city population, at least its domestic population. And then there becomes the problem, there become two sets of problems. What do we do if we're going to do this to make downtown, uh, or the neighborhoods near downtown, better places to live, and then what do we, it, the fact is they're not empty. And what do we do with the people who live there? Well, on Wednesday we're going to talk about what happens to the people who live there, because we're going to begin to talk about the history of the public housing movement. But right now, but for today we're going to really, so we're, going to, we're going to talk a little bit about slum clearance, but not really about kind of the rehousing of those people. And today we're going to really focus on um, a kind of series of decisions. But, you know, we have, um, you know, we're talking a lot about density now in ways that think, isn't density great, right? But go back to the beginnings <laughs> of planning, right? The whole evolution of planning related to sanitation, overcrowded housing, you know, all of that. Density was problematic. But it does come up. Those same kinds of questions come up in this topic, we're going to kind of we'll return to those. Yeah. But today we're going to talk about transportation and urban forms and the history. Today we, I will use a few examples from Los Angeles, especially one or two little vignettes of things that happened that have national significance that actually happened in Los Angeles. To begin, the, historically, the location of cities, where cities are, all over the world, is related to transportation. And it's also related for pretty much to defense. The cities tend to be on high ground, tend to be places with visibility, uh, places where uh, people could defend against uh, attack.